All right, so here's a pretty typical multimeter. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do when you get your multimeter is you need to plug uh, your probes into the meter. So the black probe is always gonna go in this uh, com, common port here. And the red probe, depending on what you wanna measure, is gonna go in uh, the volts, ohms, and milliamps um, hole. You could use this one if you want to measure currents higher than milliamps. So most of the stuff that you're going to want to do for troubleshooting guitar effects, you're going to want to be plugged into this V, ohm, omega, milliamp uh, hole. Right, the next thing you're going to do, all right, so we're going to talk about first about measuring voltage. So we need to turn it on. And you have to make sure you know the difference between VAC, alternating current, and VDC, for direct current. And so you can tell by these symbols here. The wavy symbol is for AC, alternating current, and the straight line with the parallel dotted line is the symbol for DC, direct current. So um, unless you want to measure AC, for guitar pedals, most of what we're going to be doing is measuring in DC. So we need to set it. Um, in this range here and then you want to set it um, as close to the voltage that you're going to be reading without going under so we are going to be typically you're going to be measuring 9 volts so the closest we can get without going under is 20 so we're going to set it to 20 if you wanted to measure something that was 24 volts DC, then you'd need to set it to 200. But we're doing nine volts, so we're gonna set it to 20. If I set it for two, it's gonna to be too low and it's not gonna take the measurement. Okay, so uh, this, this particular model, this is the one that we sell at Build Your Own Clone. This particular model has an on off button. A lot of them will just uh, auto turn off after they've been sitting around for a while and turn on when you turn the dial. Um, I don't know. They're all, they're all a little different, but for the most part, they're all the same. And this is pretty typical. Um, so the next thing we're going to do, and I'll turn that on, and we're going to get a pedal. And... Before you can measure voltages, you have to make sure that you have a plug in the input because that is the actual, your uh, foot switch is a bypass switch, it's not an on off switch. So I've got a, I've got a battery in there, should be a fresh battery, and it doesn't turn anything on and off until I plug that uh, plug in there so we've got power now so even when it's in bypass the circuit's still powered just the LED gets turned off okay now to measure um, I'll zoom out uh, you touch the black probe to ground and keep it there um, the best place for ground is usually the sleeve on the jack, either jack, so you can touch it to the sleeve here on the input jack, or you can touch it to the sleeve here on the output jack. Um, the chassis, if you can make, um, if there's not too much paint there and you can make good contact, but uh, the most certain place is the sleeve. And then you just touch your red probe to wherever it is you want to measure. So we'll touch pin 8 of 
this chip and we should get 9.6. So my, my battery's uh, running a little hot, getting a little over 9 volts, so that's okay. Um, so now let me talk about the pins on the chip. So this little uh, dot right here will indicate pin one. So that's pin one. Sometimes there won't be a dot here. Sometimes there'll be this little U-shaped thing that I'm etching into the top of the chip there. And so that is the top. So always to the top and the left is pin one. Um, underneath this, I don't know if you can see, you can see on the screen printing on the PCB that um, there's a little notch there. So your chip might have this dot, it might have a notch, but uh, top left hand corner right there is always pin one. And it goes um, sequentially in counterclockwise order. So pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, pin five, on the other side, pin four, then around to the other side, pin five, pin six, pin seven, and pin eight. Pin eight is directly across from uh, pin one. On this chip, this is a dip eight chip. Um, sometimes you'll have a dip 14, so it'll be pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then around to the other side, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And sometimes you'll have a dip 16. And those would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then around 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if you are, um, if we're helping you with tech support and I say, you know, measure, give, tell me the voltages on your um, dip 8 chip here, your 4558D chip, and then you just tell me pin 1 voltage pin to the voltage so we'll zoom out and take the voltages here so pin one through three we should see half voltage so what's half of 9.6 Four point eight, yep. Eight point nine, so approximately four point seven. And then pin four here is connected to ground, so we should see zero. We're gonna come back to that in a second, talk about that. Um four point seven nine, four point eight. 4.8 and then pin 8 should be our supply voltage 9.61 okay so let's go back to pin 4 pin 4 is connected to ground so we're seeing zero voltage here all right so hopefully you understand how to, how to take voltages now now another useful feature that you'll use a lot in troubleshooting guitar pedals is the continuity setting and the setting for that is this little uh, speaker or sound symbol for sound here and you'll see why because when we set it to that and we touch the probes together it beeps and so continuity means that uh, there's continuity. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, so, if we go back to our pedal and we take our black and continuity, we don't need. Doesn't matter. The black goes to ground or vice versa. But just always put black to ground just to keep uh, reduce your confusion. So we got our black probe to ground, and now I'm going to touch pin four of this chip. Number one, pin one, two, three, four. So 
So when we plug this uh, plug into the jack, it completes the ground circuit. It connects the ground of this sleeve and the ground of your jack and your guitar cable and your the chassis of your guitar amp all can it gets connected to the circuit ground here as well. Um, so there's a you know if you look at the schematic you can see several places. Uh, pin two here should all should always be connected to ground and a couple other places. So that's how you test continuity. Um, so now let's talk about how to use this uh, continuity test to check your foot switch. So here's our standard 3PDT. That stands for triple pull, double throw. So that it, mean, it means that I have, this switch has three poles and each pole has two throws. So the poles are your solder lugs here in the middle and uh, you orient it this way, not this way. So this, the, these are not the poles. These are the poles. And then these are one set of throws and these are another set of throws. And so a switch doesn't have an, a designated on or off position or on, on, in our case, on or bypass. That becomes designated depending on how you wire it. So you could, you could wire use the wiring diagram that we supply or any other wiring diagram orient your switch this way or you could orient it 180 degrees the other way doesn't matter depend you know once you wire it one way is going to be on and one way is going to be bypass you just can't orient it 90 degrees this way or this way all right so this way or this way so this is basically three switches in one. So this pole, when, when uh, it's in one state, this pole will connect to this throw, this pole will connect to this throw, and this pole will connect to this throw. And then in the other state, this pole will connect to this throw, here to here, and here to here. No connections are made this way. So, uh, I don't know what state this is in, so let's see. We touch here, here. Okay, so everything should be going this way, and nothing should be going this way. So we should have continuity here, and here, and here, but not here, not here, and not here. And we shouldn't have it from here to here, or here to here, or here to here, or here to here. No lateral or diagonal continuity only up and down so right now these poles are connected to their respective throws in this direction now if we press the switch these poles should be connected to their respective throws in this direction so we should have continuity here here and here but not here here or here and so that's how you do a continuity test on your foot switch. So if um, we're helping you with tech support and we ask you to get your multimeter out and test for continuity on your foot switch, that's how you do that. Okay, so that's just a little bit of how you use a, your digital multimeter for troubleshooting guitar effects. When you're done, don't forget to turn your meter off. This particular meter does not have an auto off, I don't think. So you will kill your battery if you leave it on. And same with your guitar pedal. Um, don't forget to pull that out of the input to turn it off.